this is the last video of our series of lectures on <clears throat> uh, showing that non-deterministic finite automata are equivalent with deterministic finite automata. And in this video, I'm going to give you an example on how to build the equivalent uh, deterministic finite automaton, even a non-deterministic one. <clears throat> in the lecture notes, you do have one example and it's very well written. And I'm going to give you here a second example so that you can have um, two different constructions. And we will have a few more in the exercises in your demo sessions. So here is an example. And <clears throat> the example is really from um, a non-deterministic automaton to an equivalent uh, EFA. And <clears throat> the example I'm going to take is one that we have seen before, uh, is the um, set of words over alphabet um, zero one with the property that W has one on the third position from the right. <clears throat> And <clears throat> this is an example that we have seen before and we even built an NFA for it. And the NFA was pretty straightforward. We have, uh, um, you know, state zero <clears throat> and I'm staying with, uh, <clears throat> I realize now that the example we had before was with A and B, but uh, yeah, so uh, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, we go with uh, letter one into a different state, one, and then with uh, zero and one, we go into state two and with letter zero one <coughs> into state three and zero was the initial state and uh, three was the final state. And in one of the previous videos, I even constructed a DFA uh, for this language and the construction was uh, quite intricate and uh, I had to explain a lot to make a convincing argument for why this automaton ex is exactly the one we need. But eventually <clears throat> I uh, built this automaton for you. So we would, we would start from a state uh, S0 and uh, <clears throat> in this state we will stay with zero as long as uh, possible. You can watch the, uh, uh, one of the previous lectures to see all the arguments for why the automaton was built this way. So now I'm going relatively quickly um, and uh, I say with one, <clears throat> we go into state one and uh, with state uh, zero, we go into a state S1 zero and with letter one, <clears throat> we go into something S11. And then with um, zero, we go into a state that I was calling F11100 and this happens to be final. <clears throat> with one, we go into F101 and this happens to be final. Um, with zero, we go into F110, final state. And with one, we go into F111 and that's also final state. <clears throat> and then we had these final transitions with zero, I was going here. And with one, I was going here. <clears throat> and uh, this one with uh, zero, it was going here. And with uh, one, it was going here. And this one with zero, <coughs> um, with zero, it was going into this state. And with one, it was going into this state. <clears throat> and this one with zero, it was going here. And with one, it was going here. So uh, this was the automaton we built. <clears throat> but I would like to build now um, the equivalent or deterministic automaton uh, using our construction. And then we will see whether in the end we get something that looks uh, exactly like this or whether there is any uh, small difference. There could be differences. There could be more than one <coughs> deterministic automaton uh, for a given language. <coughs> but here is how the uh, deterministic automaton was built based on the constructions uh, on, in, in our previous video. And the idea was I'm going to 
have an automaton um, on the power set. So um, the initial state of this one is going to be, if zero was the initial state here, so zero is going to be here the initial state. <coughs> And then with, uh, I'm, I'm just checking with zero, I go into state zero in this automaton. So uh, that means I do the same in here. <clears throat> but with one, um, I can go to either state zero or to state one. So that means that with one, I'm going to stay, go to state zero, one. So that's a state. And now <clears throat> we check from this state with zero, so, from zero with zero, we go to state zero, and from one to zero, we go to state uh, two. So with zero, we go into state zero two. And again, the argument is uh, um, state zero with letter zero takes us to uh, state zero, and <clears throat> state one with zero takes us to state two. So you have these two here. And with state one, um, so from zero with one, we are going to zero and one. And from one with one, we go to state two. So our state in the deterministic automaton is going to be made of this set zero, one, two. <coughs> and now with, um, uh, from this state with uh, zero, um, so zero with zero stays stay zero and two with zero goes into state three. So with zero, we go into state zero three. And with state one, we go to, so from zero, we go to zero and one, and from two, we go to three. So that's also <coughs> a state. And by the way, because this was a final state, this one is going to be a final state because three is in here and three is in here, so that's a final state. Zero with zero stays in state zero <clears throat> and one with zero goes into state two and two with zero goes into state three. So, and that's a final state because three is in here. <clears throat> and then finally with one, zero with one goes into states zero one and two with uh, uh, one with one goes into state two, and two with one goes into state three. <clears throat> and this is also a final state. <clears throat> and now I check from this one with zero, so from three with zero, I have nowhere to go. And from zero with, with letter zero, I go to state zero, which means that I'm going to come back all the way here. And with one, from three, I don't go anywhere with one, but from zero with one, I go to zero, one. So it means that I have this transition here. And from this one <clears throat> with zero, so this one doesn't go anywhere. This one goes to state zero and this one goes to state two. And so zero, two, which is a state here. So that takes us here. And with one, this one doesn't lead anywhere. This one leads to two, and this one leads to zero, one. So it goes to zero, one, two, which is exactly this state right here. And <clears throat> now with zero, two, three, if I take uh, with letter zero, this one goes to state zero, this one goes to state three, and this one doesn't go, doesn't go anywhere. So zero, three, which is exactly this state right here. And with state one, this one doesn't lead anywhere, but this one leads to state three, and this one leads to states zero and one. So zero, one, three, which is exactly this state right here. <clears throat> and this one with, with zero, <clears throat> this one doesn't go anywhere. This one is state zero, state two, state three. So zero, two, three, which is exactly this one. And with one, this one doesn't lead anywhere. This one leads to zero, one this one leads to two, and this one leads to three. So altogether we have state zero, one, two, three. Um, so with transition one. And um, <clears throat> as you can see now, this is exactly the same automaton we have discussed about before, um, but the difference is uh, really fundamental uh, because this one is a purely mechanical uh, you know, way of building the automaton. There is an algorithm behind and uh, uh, you know, we, we can just do it following the recipe. We could we could even write a small, uh, you know, computer code to calculate this one. Whereas uh, this construction we had in one of the previous lectures was uh, really combinatorial and it was driven by our, uh, you know, deep uh, understanding of what exactly does it mean um, to have all these words um, 
with one on the third position from the right. So here you have it. This is an example of uh, how to calculate these um, um, uh, equivalent deterministic finite automata. Um, I realized that in this example, I have used the number zero, one uh, to denote both uh, states and uh, uh, input letters. And I'm hoping that this is not going to be too confusing for you. Um, and then finally, <clears throat> one more comment, which I also had uh, before, uh, but I, I cannot stress this uh, enough, really. Um, so we do have equivalence. Um, between deterministic and non-deterministic automata, but uh, I, I also have this point that uh, determinism costs. So there is, uh, in, in terms of uh, number of states, you have much more states in deterministic automata than in non-deterministic automata. So very often, if you want to build uh, uh, an automaton and uh, you want to have a compact uh, presentation of that, uh, language of that automaton, very often it pays off to think about it in terms of non-deterministic computations. But so there you have it. Um, we have proved uh, step by step that non-deterministic automata and deterministic automata are equivalent. They uh, define the set of uh, recognizable languages. And um, that wraps up our discussion on this topic.